In tutorial 18 we are going to cover how to manage the blog section of your website. We will cover how to add standard blog posts in the next tutorial, but we are first going to show you how to manage the blog posts already active on your site. This area controls all the categories, tags, subscribers, standard blog posts, and smart blog posts that you have added previously. Your page might be a little bit different than mine is over here, as you will have different blogs added. Let's start off from the beginning with the top main row. This row is for viewing the various pages of your blog and managing the various settings related to your blog. Firstly, you've got the home button. When clicked, it will take you to your live blog. Next is the category button, which will show you all the different categories and a few of the blog posts under each category. The next tab that we have is named Tags. This shows all the tags that you currently have on your site. The tags you see here are the main keywords added in the initial website design setup. These keywords can now be replaced by your own keywords if you prefer, under the management page, and you can also add tags while adding a blog post, but we will explain that in our next tutorial. On to the author's page. You will see there are two authors, the first author would be you, as the admin of the website, and then the second author would be our developer, and here it also displays the blog posts under each author. You can change the author of a blog post by clicking on the blog posts link, and then selecting edit post under the pencil on the right side of the title. And now you can select a different author on the right side of the editing page. Once you have done this, click on Update Post on the top of the page, and then again on Update Post in the drop-down box. But let's go back to showing you what else is on the top bar. The next tab that we have under our top bar is Teams. Currently, no teams are set up as it is not necessary for teams unless you want to give access to members to post on your site. If this is the case, please contact us and we will set this up for you. The next menu button is Archives, which will display archived posts. If you want to archive a post, you can set your posts to archived when editing blog posts. Under the More drop-down, you will see your calendar. Here you can see if you've got any posts pre-planned, and this gives you a great view of any gaps you have in your blog posting calendar, but for this tutorial, we don't have any posts scheduled. In all of the pages we've gone through, you may have noticed at the top right, there is a square plus button, clicking on this button says, create new, and then below that, blog post. We will cover that in the next tutorial. Next up is search, and once you have clicked on search, you can either select a category you want to search in or leave it as is. And next to the drop-down, you can see there is a text field. Here you can add your text that you want to search for. The next menu link is subscribe. You can click on subscribe to be notified of new blog posts, etc. And so can your users. In the final tab, which is your icon, we have the manage link of your blog at the bottom and the profile details above. To view an overview of your blog, click on the first menu link called Overview under your Manage section. Here you will see how many blog posts you have, hits you have received in total, how many categories, and even your most recent posts, popular posts, etc. On the draft page, you will see a list of any posts that you may have started setting up or edited but have not been published. The next link that we we have is called Posts. This displays all the published posts on the site. Next, we have Post Templates. If you're using the same type of layout every time you create a new post, I would advise that you set up a post template, which makes any future posts a bit easier by clicking on the New Template button. 
Next, we have pending posts. Here we would see any blog posts that are future dated or require your attention before publishing. As an example, if a user or moderator has submitted a post, but you have not reviewed the post or published it. If any of your posts have been reported by users of your site, they will be listed under reported posts. As it says, awesome. There are currently no reported posts on the site. The site is healthy and great. If there are any comments on your blog posts, they will be listed here under the comments section. You can also add polls to your blog posts. And any polls that have been set up will be under the polls section. Under categories, you will see a list of the different categories on your site. Let's go into this link because this is where you manage your categories for your website. You'll see that there is general info and then the advice column, which are the two categories that we initially added to your smart site. You can also see that there is a button on the top right of the page which says new category. Once you have clicked on this new category button, you will be asked to put in a category name. Below this is the category permalink, which you can leave blank as it will be automatically generated from the category name. Next is your description of your category, so here you could add a description, but this is not required. At the bottom of the description, you will see a drop-down that says select parent category. If you want this to be a subcategory of one of the main categories, then you can select the main category as the parent, or you can leave it as is, and it will become a top-level category. Under Privacy, you can select the viewable permissions for either website users or registered members. We suggest leaving it on users unless you will be adding members to your site. Again, we will be happy to set this up for you, so contact us if you want this feature on your blogs. And then finally, it's the Category Avatar. The best option is to add your website favicon or your logo icon. Once you're done, at the bottom right of the page, you can click on Create and your new category will be added. You may add as many categories or subcategories as you'd like on this page. You can also see how many posts are in each category and if the category has subcategories. So now let's get back to the blog management at the top. You will see the next link under Categories is Tags. You can add new tags here which helps when you're posting, as you can then select them and add them to your posts for SEO purposes and a way to link similar blog posts together. The next menu is for favorited posts. As soon as anyone favorites a post on your site, it would appear under this section. The final two links under Manage are Teams and Team Requests, which are for setting up multiple teams that could have access to posting blogs to different categories, which would be controlled by you or another admin. Finally, you can edit your own profile under the Account link. And you can also view your subscriptions to any blog posts. And with the last link you can sign out. If you click on Sign Out, you will be signed out of the management part of the site and the management of the blog. In the next lesson, I will quickly show you how to add standard blog posts.